My name is Alessandro Golombievski Teixeira. I'm professor of public policy and management at Xinhua. That's the difficulty to film when you have a four years old. I've been in China for three years now. I live in the Chinese community. So my life has been changing as every single Chinese has been changing. This is my everyday life. I take <laughs> breakfast and I go work. I do the office, right? Yes. Yeah. What made you and your family decide to come to Beijing? I kind of have been coming to China since 1998. So I could observe the development of China, the changes of China. When we thought where we want to educate it and raise our daughter and to live for a long time, China was uh, our first option. How would you like her to grow up in China? I, I'd like to see her growing up as an international citizen, but with a very strong base in China. Yeah. If you see the profile of the Chinese families, Everything is about the education of their sons. Everything is to teach them to be better than the old generation. So I think uh, that's how I see the education of my daughter here. Oh, I see. Are you planning to have your daughter educated in China? Yeah, she's already educated in China. She goes to kindergarten here at Tsinghua University. And she's going to go to primary school here and uh, until college and then she decides which college she wants to go but if she wants to stay in Tijuana I'm going to be very happy. Tete, papai vem embora, vem da beira. This is really tough to have an Olympics right now. Yes, of course, it's not an easy situation. Where were you when the 2008 Olympics was hosted in Beijing? I was in Beijing, I was in the opening. You were at the opening? Yes. Wow. I was the whole Olympic game here. I was uh, one of the leaders of the Brazilian delegation by that time. So I was lucky enough to be in the opening. It was amazing. It was a great show. I remember the guys with the drums and uh, it's in my memory. That's something that never goes away. and then I was here 2010 for the Expo Shanghai. I was happy enough to participate in both. Very few countries had the opportunity, especially developing countries. I learned a lot with two of these big events, with China to, to help Brazil to prepare our nomination for those events. Do you like the idea of Beijing hosting another Olympics, this time the winter? Oh, for sure. And I hope in the near future that I'm going to be alive, Beijing is going to host another Summer <laughs> Olympics. Because for Latin America, and we don't have a lot of snow, we don't have a lot of delegations, we don't have winter. The most important is the summer. So, yeah. Now Beijing is getting ready for the second one, you're also hoping for a third one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, in your opinion, what's the significance of the Winter Olympics to China and to the rest of the world, especially at this moment? To see COVID and Omicron around the world is a nightmare. In the Western countries, many people, in my opinion, stupidly, think, okay, it's my freedom. I don't think that way. Maybe that's why I live in China, okay? China did a tremendous job uh, protecting its people and offering help to around the world. Uh, athletes that prepare themselves for a lifetime. They are looking at the games. They want to be here for the games. So I think that's important, very, very important. That's why China is given an example of how to do a safe uh, Winter Olympics, meaning that they took all the precautions that they could to do this. So they did the impossible in terms of organizing, especially in a large city like Beijing with more than 20 million people. What would you call the biggest changes between the two Olympics? I think it's the development process itself. China has raised its level uh, in education, in culture, even in health. China is much more internationalized than it was before. The first place I arrived in China was Guangdong. This year I went to Dongguan and I couldn't find where I was because it changes completely. It's a new city like Shenzhen. 
And how do you think China becomes what it is today? I do believe that the Communist Party leadership is a fundamental, to not say the only fundamental, but is the center element why China become what it become. To me, is the leadership part, the education part, the planning part, its own political system. Many people say, oh, uh, China became a capitalist country. No, it didn't become a capitalism country. China is still a socialism uh, with Chinese characteristics. Those characteristics are its people, its culture, its political system, its history.